What's up, D-Buzz? What's up, D-Buzz? What's up, d -Buzz? So, you guys, you already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So, what's up? What's up? What's up? Real Talk Wednesday for you guys. Um, You know what to do on Real Talk Wednesday. You can all get yourself a drink, a snack, whatever. I got two for you guys today. So, I want to thank everybody for sending me. I think I got like 10 all together within a week, which is great because uh, I can talk shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to talk shit. I like to talk shit. So, you know, give my advice or just give my opinion because I like to be opinionated sometimes. You know, I just, listen, I just want to be there for you guys as much as you guys were there for me and are still there for me. So, you know, I love to do Real Talk. I think, like, Real Talk is, like, one of my favorite videos. It actually is one of my favorite videos. Like, don't get me wrong. I love doing the hair videos. I love hair I love it. I like makeup too. Um, I don't really do too many makeup videos, but I love to do the hair videos. But I really enjoy like the real talk because you know, it's basically well, I'm always me, but I could just sit back and relax and just talk to you guys instead of having to show you something, which I don't mind doing. But I really rather just be talking to you guys. You know, we just be kicking it and chilling. So it's Real Talk Wednesday, and I'm happy. So don't it, listen. First of all. For those who ask me about why is my wig looking twisted in the front, I've had this wig on, I kid you not, for like five days with using that got to be Glam Force hairspray. So it is time for it to take it off because it is a little bit lifted um, and stuff like that. But I went grocery shopping today, so I really didn't have time. I didn't really want to go wearing a scarf. So I just, you know, wore this, threw a headband on and went to the grocery store. But it definitely is time to um, take this wig off. I did do a review on it like uh, probably like a month and a half ago, two months ago, whatever. But it's really pretty hair. Um, especially when you just wash it and let it air dry. Oh my God, the curls look way better than this in person. Like for real, like amazing. So I'll definitely have to hopefully remember cause you know, my ass is old and see now I might forget, but if I don't, I will put the link to the hair, to the tutorial down below for you guys. But other than that, it's just been a really cool week. Easy breezy, you know, um, what did I do today? And yesterday I went to court with my son, you know, he always in trouble. Um, I didn't really do anything. I didn't do no videos over the weekend. I forgot why. <clears throat> oh, because we went, yes, girl. We went prom dress shopping on Saturday for Nay. So, you know, she's in 11th grade, so she is going to prom. And she got this really pretty dress, um, pretty dress um, that she picked out. And I'll definitely have to post a picture of it soon to come because prom is coming up. So unfortunately, it won't be this video because I don't have a picture of her in it. Um, and if I did, I'm pretty sure she wouldn't want you guys to see it until she's like all glamored out. But we did do that. We went prom dress shopping. It's the first time ever I went prom dress shopping, okay, um, for one of my kids, not for myself. I remember that like it was yesterday. No, because yesterday for me would not have been yesterday since I'm about to be 45. But I remember going prom dress shopping with my mom at this store called a &S in Brooklyn. And um, it was a department store. a &S is like a Macy's. I think they changed the name from a &S to Macy's, actually. But, um, yeah, we went into their basement where they have, like, all these, like, basically clearance clothes like the whole basement and I got this pink dress it was a gown and it was so pretty and it was on clearance and my mom you know she really didn't have much money but she was able to afford this dress for me and it was beautiful it just sucked you in right here and it just blew out and she still has that dress to this day and she showed it to me um recently when I was at her house and I just looked at it and was like there's no way that I'm ever even going to be able to try that on you know what I'm saying like I cannot believe that I was that small and yes, iced coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. Shout out to Dunkin' Donuts. I don't really fuck with um, Starbucks. So anyway, other than that, everything is cool. I've been chilling. I've been working like normal. Um, I really haven't been working as hard as normal because, you know, I just came back and I'm just trying to get situated. But other than that, everything is cool. You know, like I said, I went to court yesterday and today um, for my son. And um, it was so funny because I seen two of my subscribers at the court um, for probation violation. Yeah. So they was asking me about a wig and I thought it was so cute because at first I was like, how do you even know I have a wig on? Because the way they approached me and then they told me and I was like, wow. So you guys know that my son is really bad because I'm here. And they was giving them pointers on, you know, how to, you know, like do things. 
But anyway, um, yeah, that was my day. Um, but other than that, it's just chill. You know what I'm saying? I got a bunch of videos that I have to do this weekend for sure. A lot of wigs that I'm going to have to do to post up on my website. So, you know, you ladies, make sure you, you know, you subscribe or follow me on Instagram and Facebook. So that way, if you are interested in a wig, I have them and they are super duper duper cheap. So you guys know the drill. If you want a real talk video about yourself or your friends, you can always send me an email to Muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line real talk. Um, and yeah, if you want to change the names of the people that you're talking about in the video or in the email rather, cause you know, sometimes people might think that you're talking about them, but you can always change the names. You can let me know you change the names. If you don't let me know 99.9% .9 baby daddies, I will change it for you. Okay. So let's get into this real talk real quick. Cause I got two of them. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start off with the longest one, which is this one here. And girl, I went and bought me a new memory card, 64 megabytes. <laughs> Hello. I love Amazon. So this memory card is going to go through both of these for both of these i ain't got to change shit out i'm happy hello so let's get into this hello april i absolutely love your videos and have been subscribed to you for years this is going to be a long one so i apologize in advance but i want you to have all the facts well i need some advice on some shit that's going on right now my friend michelle first of all all the names have been changed my friend michelle and i tracy myself me tracy have been knowing this guy named sean um, family for over 20 years, but not so much him because he was in the service. Then he got married and never came back to his hometown. Sean was married for 16 years, living away and was just divorced two years ago. And a few months ago, he moved back to his hometown. One day I get a friend request from Sean on Facebook. So I accepted it. When Michelle noticed me and Sean were friends, she told me that they were friends too and had a conversation through Messenger and even exchanged numbers and had conversations. So Michelle and Sean, you know, they're friends too on Facebook. They've exchanged numbers. They've called each other. You know what I'm saying? And Tracy is just being told this by Michelle because Michelle and her are, you know what I'm saying, friends. Here's where things start going west. Sean is the chef. Since he's been back, he's he does catering for parties and etc. And he also sells individual dinners and these loaded potatoes. Now at this point, they, meaning Michelle and Sean, they've had a few conversations. He asked Michelle's cousin, Sean asked Michelle's cousin about her. And his cousin let him know that Michelle was the girl he used to mess around with behind his wife's back for years. Basically his mistress. So Sean, after hearing this, confronted Michelle with the information that he had received. And Michelle lied until he told her it was nothing he had heard. It was straight from, it wasn't, so basically Michelle lied until Sean told her it was nothing he heard like basically on the streets it was straight from his cousin's mouth michelle finally admitted it and sean let her know he couldn't fuck with her and not only did he block her from social media because she kept inboxing him she blo he blocked her phone number because she kept calling him mind you all of this april is unknown to me until the end okay so back to sean being a chef he was selling loaded potatoes and he'd advertise it on Facebook. So me, along with 30 other people maybe, placed some orders. Orders were placed on a Wednesday and was to be picked up on that Friday. So when Friday comes, Sean sends a message to everyone who placed an order that it's ready to be picked up. I told him I was at work and I would message back when I was on my way and he said, okay. I get off of work, I message Sean, and he sends me the address to pick to where to come and pick up my loaded potatoes. On the drive, Michelle happens to call, so I tell her I'm on my way to your friend Sean's to pick up my loaded potatoes and my food. Michelle says, oh, he making you something personal? I was like, hell no. Nah. He was having a sale and I placed an order. Why would you even say that? 
That's when I found out the whole story about Sean finding out Michelle was his cousin's mistress a few years ago and how she had lied about it to him. That was also when I found out she was blocked also because she told me she would have ordered if she had seen the posting, but she was blocked. And I was like, damn, he blocked you? And she was like, yeah, but I was just trying to explain to him that whatever happened with me and his cousin was the past. And I really liked having conversations with him. Another thing, Sean doesn't know that me and Michelle even know one another at this point. Okay, so as I pull up to get my load of potatoes, she keeps, she says, keep me on the phone. So I message him to let him know I'm outside. And he replies, okay, and comes out with my food. I pay and Sean gives me the potatoes and I leave. Michelle is all hyped talking about, oh my God, I can't believe he got me blocked, etc. Later that day, I get an inbox from Sean saying that it was nice to meet me and he hoped I enjoyed his food. I told him I did and he said, if you don't mind, I would like to take you out. I told Sean that I knew someone he was communicating with and he asked who and I said, Michelle. He went on to tell me the exact story Michelle had told. But he added the fact that he blocked her because she was acting crazy and desperate by continuously calling him and Facebook messaging him after he told her he wanted nothing to do with her. I told him there is no way I was going to believe that my friend wouldn't back the fuck up if a man told her he wanted nothing to do with her. So Sean sent me texts and Facebook messages and I couldn't believe it. She, my friend, was like, she was on some stalk, well, so my friend Michelle was on some stalker type shit, like, so that's why he said he blocked her from everything. Now, all that to say this, Sean continues to ask me out, assuring me that he only had a few conversations with Michelle through Facebook Messenger and a few through text messages before he had the conversation with his cousin about her. And then he blocked her. And Michelle says the exact same things that Sean is saying to me. They saw each other once for about five minutes because he catered her family member's event, but was mostly in the kitchen. No touch, no feels, no nothing. Just five minutes. After a few minutes of a few after a few times of asking him out, I told him I'm going to let excuse me. After a few times of Sean asking me out, I told him I'm going to let Michelle know that he's asking me out and and he said he didn't care because he had nothing going on with her anyway. And the reason he sent those messages was so if I didn't want to go out with him, he didn't want it to be because of of, of what I thought was going on or what I may have thought was going on with him and Michelle. Well, I told Michelle and she went off saying that he's only asking me out because he can't get her and he's being messy because at this time he knows we're friends and we've been friends for over 20 years. So she's saying all this, not knowing that I have seen the messages from her to him acting all crazy and stalkerish. So I just left it alone. I didn't say anything else to Michelle. She also said if I know that she liked him rather than anything happened or what? She also said, if I know that she liked him, rather anything happened or not with him, I'm not a friend if I entertained him. Sean continued to ask me out and through my cousin started to send me food when he cooked. Oh, so Sean continued to ask me out as well as that he would send cut food through my cousin when he cooked and made homemade treats like chocolate covered strawberries and pretzels. He's been pursuing me now for two months and constantly saying we're grown and he sees something with us. He wants to take me out on trips and shower me and shower me with things and gifts, but I keep ignoring him. I have asked two of my coworkers what they would do in this situation. And they said, fuck it. I might be missing out on some shit because I'm trying to save and look out for somebody else's happiness instead of my own but I just don't want to hurt Michelle's feelings or have people looking at me like I done took a man from my friend or desperate looking or, or looking desperate. I just don't know what to do. Help. So basically, let's just go back to all of this. Tracy and Michelle have been friends for over 20 years. Sean is 
also like a mutual friend of both of theirs. But they really didn't know Sean too well. They just know of his family because he's been in the service. He's been married for 16 years. He's been away. He never came back to live in his hometown. He finally got divorced two years ago. And that's when he came back to live in their hometown. So he sent a friend request to Michelle. As well as that, he also sent a friend request to Tracy. Now, Tracy is the one who wrote in. Michelle informed Tracy, since they friends, hey, I noticed basically we got a mutual friend in, on Facebook. We friends too. We kind of say, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? She finds out that, Tracy finds out that Sean is a chef. He makes loaded potatoes. He makes home cooked meals. He makes treats. He also does catering. He advertises on Facebook. You can come through and buy dinner from him. It is what it is. It's his own little personal hustle, okay? Now, mind you, when she finally goes to pick up the food, she on the phone with her friend, Michelle. And Michelle is telling her how he blocked her. If she would have known that he was selling dinners, she would have purchased one, but he blocked her. Never really said why he blocked her. So, you know, from that point on, Sean has to show Tracy screenshots of messages from Facebook and text messages. So basically, Tracy's friend, Michelle, long story short, is on some stalker shit. Like, you know, she really trying to pursue dude, but Sean is not really trying to fuck with Michelle because he already found out that Michelle was fucking with his cousin on the side for years as his cousin's mistress. You know what I'm saying? So because of that, he didn't really want to fuck with her. You know what I'm saying? So he let Tracy know the deal as well as Michelle did too. But Michelle didn't say she was acting stalkerish. She didn't say none of that shit. Long story short, Sean asked Tracy out. You know what I'm saying? He want to take her out. Can we go out? She telling Michelle, listen, I know that you were friends with him, but he's asked me out. And here goes Michelle. Oh, he only wants you because he can't get with me. He want me. He don't really want you, basically, is what it all boils down to. And if you even try to get with him or entertain that, then you're not a real friend. But she still is not telling, you know what I'm saying, Tracy how, yeah, I stalked the nigga. That's why he blocked me. But Tracy's knowing this already, but she's not saying nothing. So she is caught between a rock and a hard place. Okay. She got this man who's pursued with her for over two months, sending her treats through her family members, you know what I'm saying? Asking her out. He feels like there's something going on, like they got something, some type of chemistry, talking about how he gonna shower her with gifts and shit like that and treat her right, you know, all that good shit that men say to you and they cause they think you wanna fucking hear that shit. Okay. I'm not saying he a bad person. I don't know him personally, but I know when a nigga come through and they want to say all this shit about, oh, you know, I'm going to shower you with gifts. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Pump your brakes, dude, because I ain't even been knowing you that long. Just pump your motherfucking brakes. Go get them shits changed because you done stepped on them fucking brake pads too hard. So it's time to change them shits. Like pump them, pump them. Nigga slam on them brakes. Okay. But all this, I'm going to shower you with shit. That shit is so lame. Like, for real, niggas, just be yourself. Stop trying to feed women bullshit. But anyway, so she want to know what she should do. Her co-workers, Tracy's co-workers are telling her, you know, fuck it. You might be missing out on a good thing. You need to find happiness, et cetera, et cetera. Let me tell you what I would do in this circumstance is this. You know, you got your friend over here who you've been friends with for 20 years, and she's feeding you a bunch of lies. Like, she's not really being truthful with you. And that kind of would be hurtful to me because if we've been friends for over two and a half, 20, over 20 years, excuse me, You've been friends with her for over 20 years and she's feeding you lies like, oh, I'm saying he blocked me and you ain't no real friend if you want to get with him. And stuff. First of all, sweetheart, let's just get this straight. You ain't never been with him, Michelle. That ain't your man. He never was your man. Y'all had a few conversations with one another. And when Sean came to find out that you were sleeping with somebody else's husband, he wasn't trying to fuck with you. So therefore, y'all didn't even have anything going on. A conversation is a conversation. That shit don't count for much, especially if he not only trying to fuck with you, but you kept pursuing the nigga and he had to block you. Now, it might come in between the friendship. However, this is what I do know. They never had a relationship going. You know what I'm saying? There was never a relationship. And the fact that y'all are friends for 20 years, you should be able to go to your friend and let her know, listen, I really do like dude. He want to take me out. Um, from what I was shown and what I know, the reason why he blocked you is because of just 
bad vibes. I, I don't know if bad vibes is the right word to use in this situation with your friend, but I do know this, that you are grown. She grown too. She got blocked because she was acting like a fucking desperate maniac and he really wasn't feeling her like that. And you know, now she basically trying to tell you how, oh, he only want to get what you to get with me because he can't get with me. Like you some high class specimen on a fucking platter sweetheart that right there would have irritated my motherfucking nerves to the point like sweetheart first of all he ain't even trying to get with you hoe you fuck with somebody else's man that's how you get down but you know what sometimes we have to restrain ourselves from hurting other people's feelings and not saying nothing so me personally i don't know like i probably would just basically have a uh, have a good heart to heart with her because that is your friend and you don't want anything to stand in between your friend but you have your friend need to understand that you never had a relationship with dude we grown, we grown ups. Just because you like him or you did have some type of feelings, I'm not really sure what the feelings was for him, but you know what I'm saying? He wasn't trying to fuck with you. Let's move past that. He's not for you. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely, me personally, I would definitely have to have a conversation with her because if you really do, Tracy, want to go out with dude, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to shower you with gifts and sending food through your family and things and conversations with you, then I would go out with him. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just have to, I'm not saying overstep a boundary because it's not really overstepping a boundary. Your friend never fucked with him. That's not her man. No one ever said he was trying to get with her to be her man either. He was just trying to basically feel her out and see where things could have gone. But being that he heard what he heard, he wasn't trying to move any further with Michelle. And I could get that. But your friend is acting real childish if she feels like, oh, well, you only want to get what he only want to get with you because of her. And also that bullshit like, well, if you was a friend and you wouldn't get with him. Let me tell you this much. That girl code shit, I can believe it and I can stand by some of it, but all that extra shit, I'm not really going for. If that was not your man and never was your motherfucking man, then there is no girl code, okay? First of all, girls are, are not women. They're not grown women. They're girls, okay? We are dealing with grown women in this situation who are basically one is blocked and one is not and the one that is not blocked of course has a man who is pursuing her and she's allowing her friend who is a fucking maniac stalker push the relationship away sometimes we have to be grown-ups sometimes we got to stand on our own two feet i know this much i'm not saying old do sean is going to make you happy i'm not saying he ain't going to shower you with gifts i ain't saying he is okay what i will tell you this is this you need to have a conversation with old girl, Michelle, and let her know, listen, I love you. You're my friend. We've been friends, and I would never want anything or anyone to come in between us. But I do have, like, I do like him, and he likes me, and I would like to, I'm going to go out with him. And not to mention, you know, kind of like try to slide that shit in there, like, you know, Michelle, I did end up seeing the Facebook messages and the text messages that you sent to him and the reason why he blocked you. Or you don't even have to say that. You can just say, hey, Michelle, I, I do know the truth of why you were blocked. I'm pretty sure she's not going to say anything. She probably ain't going to want to talk about the shit. Bitch, she was acting like a stalker. Me, I mean, like, listen, happiness, you have to make sure that you, we, we all have to be happy. You know what I'm saying? Everyone wants to be happy. I, I cannot imagine people not wanting to be happy. I mean, there are people in this world who are not happy. They're depressed. They don't like their life. They're, they, they, are hurted. they are hurting and they're angry within themselves. And that's a hard feeling to just be a person who's angry all the time and just angry within. And maybe Michelle has those issues or she's just a spiteful ass bitch. Maybe she needs to just go find a man and stop being so desperate. But me personally, I would go out with the person. See how it goes for you. Don't. But here's the thing. Don't fall for the bullshit and okie doke. You know, you know how they come through. That's their motherfucking rep. Representative baby. Representative them. Mm -hmm. They come through like, you know, I'm a shower you, bitch. I'm a, I'm a pick you up and carry you and whisk you off on a motherfucking white horse. And I'm a save the day. This is going to be happily ever after like a motherfucking Disney story. So let's not fall for that shit with him telling you, oh, I'm a shower you with this. and Oh, I'm going to do that. Let's not fall for that shit. Just if you want to go out with him, go out with him. But I would definitely say something to my friend about it. And if she really is your friend, 
then she's going to understand where you're coming from and she's going to step in her lane and she's going to set aside and she's going to let you be happy. But if she ain't really no real friend and she hating and she's doing all that extra shit, girl, bye. Let her go. Because sometimes it's not even worth it. It's going to cause, it's going to cause conflict in your relationship if you get to have a relationship with someone. Or it's going to cause conflict between you and her and he, you and him. Either way, I see it like this. They ain't have no hold. They ain't got no ties with one another. They never dated each other. He seen her for five minutes because he was catering her family's event and didn't fuck with her after that. If dude really liked Michelle, even while he was catering her family's event, I guarantee you, I promise you, he would have made time for her at that event. Regardless if he was in the kitchen cooking, regardless if he was catering it, I guarantee you, if Sean really liked Michelle, which is Tracy's friend, he would have made time for her while he was catering that event, which her family held. You know what I'm saying? He would have given her more than five minutes of his time, but he's not into her like that. And you can tell that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's work. It's work related. He's there, but you got to engage with people. You got to entertain people, regardless if you are catering and stuff. You got to engage with people. You want to make sure that your business is known. You want to make sure that they ask you, hey, cater our next event. But he wasn't trying to get Michelle in at that time. He stayed his ass in the kitchen. So basically, I don't think dude was really interested in her like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention, they only have phone conversations. So that shit don't really account for nothing. You can't say you dating somebody because you have phone conversations with them. Like, damn, this is not MTV catfish. Okay. This is real life. Like I get so sick and tired of people saying, well, that's my man. Bitch, you ain't never even seen him. I'm just saying, like, you know what I'm saying? So for me, Tracy, I'll give you all the blessings in the world. You know what I'm saying? I seriously do because everybody deserves to be happy. Everybody deserves bliss. Everybody deserves to have a good friend. Everybody deserves to have a loved one. Everybody deserves fucking happiness, regardless of what. And you're never supposed to let anybody stand in your way of happiness. So you want to be miserable with your friend, Michelle, because if the bitch is psychotic and she constantly calling people phone. First of all, let me, let me just say this. I'm not about to be calling somebody phone and messaging them over and over and over and over again. Like, do you know how embarrassing that would be to me myself if I was someone who kept messaging someone else and messaging them and messaging them and texting them? You know what I'm saying? An the opposite sex. Like, that's embarrassing. Do to be like, oh, yo, she thirsty. She thirsty. Like, Sean could have just like hit it and just ran off, but he didn't even do that. He didn't want to have no parts of Michelle. So now she's salty. She real salty. She like sea salt salty. Okay. Bitch is real salty. And she bringing some of that fucking seasoning. She trying to sprinkle a little bit of that shit on Tracy. Tracy. Okay, honey, run that shit under lukewarm water and get rid of the salt and go have yourself a good time. And if dude is worth it, then go ahead and carry on and get to know one another. But I guarantee you, Michelle is going to be okay. You have to explain to her this. You need to let her know. I do know the real reason why he did block you. No shade. You ain't got to be hostile about it. But you do need to let her know that I'm going to go out with him. And I don't want this to interfere with our friendship. Sometimes we have to pinpoint. We have to like really point shit out to people for them to realize like I'm not going to allow this to interfere with our relationship because I really do care for you. Like with Michelle. She already explained to Tracy, you are not a real friend if you entertain this dude. First of all, that's not a nice thing to say. We are not in kindergarten, honey. It's just not a nice thing to say. Second of all, Michelle's already feeling some type of way because she's already stated, well, he only want to get with you because he want to get with me. So if he wants to get with you so bad, Michelle, this would be me. If I was Tracy and Michelle was telling me, oh, he only want to get with you because he's trying to get with me, then I would say, well, why don't why don't you want to get with him then? What's wrong? What's the what's the problem? Like, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to so if he don't want to get with you, what why if he wants to get with you, why aren't you getting with him? Like, why don't you want to go out with him? What what's the problem? She probably wouldn't know what to say. Let her feed you some more motherfucking lies. And then that's when you have to that's when you just be like, first of all, sweetheart, boo, you got blocked because you're psychotic. You were stalking the dude. So it's like one thing to another thing. It's like a whole bunch of shit that could be kind of like 
transpired into something different. She could say, oh, you just mad hate and that's why you're going out with him. Oh, that's what he told you. What type of friend are you to believe him? That he showed you those text messages and you're going to believe him. Like this could get really like on some real shit. This could be like a friendship that could end over a guy. And like, it's really not worth it. You know what I'm saying? But if you are really bonded as friends, then your friend Michelle should not feel that way. She should not have any type of animosity or bitterness towards you because you went out with Sean, who was not fucking interested in her in the first place. Okay, point blank period. If he only spoke to her for five minutes, if that during his fam his catering event, then I guarantee you, dude is not really interested. If he was interested in Michelle, as don't you think that nigga would have came through with them chicken wings and everything at the event, looking at her and kept coming back out there asking her, do she need anything else to eat? Can he stuff her motherfucking potato? Okay, seriously. Bitch, go out with that nigga and have a good time. But just please, I'm I'm begging of you. Okay? Don't let that okie doke bullshit that he's talking about shower you and all of the shit get to you. Because niggas will say shit and bitches will say shit too. Let's not get it twisted. Bitches say shit too to gas a nigga up. And niggas gas bitches up all the time. And bitches gas niggas up all the time too. So don't fall for the shit. Like when a motherfucker tell you, oh yeah, I'ma shower you with gifts. If we get together, you gonna, you gonna be so happy. I'ma treat you like a princess. You know what I'm saying? You gonna ride off on a white horse and carry rich into my castle. That means, bitch, y'all gonna be taking the motherfucking bus, okay? And y'all gonna live at the motherfucking shelter, and he gonna treat you like shit, okay? Or he gonna be living with y'all, or you, and y'all gonna still be taking the bus, okay? So, yeah, enjoy yourself. Don't let that nigga try to pull the wool over your eyes, okay? Don't let him stitch them shits closed, bitch. But go out with him and see what he's about, okay? If he's been in the service, he was married for 16 years. So maybe that does say some good about him. I'm not really sure. 16 years is a long time. But then why did they get divorced in the first place? Of course, Sean could tell you anything. You know what I'm saying? So just be very leery. Do your homework. Do your investigations, okay? That's what you need to do. Ask family members. Ask friends about him. What do they know about him? You know what I'm saying? But in the meantime, make sure that you have a conversation, a full-blown whole conversation, with Michelle's ass because it seems like once she finds out that you're going out with him, she's going to be upset and she's going to be asked hurt. But I would say this, before you go out with him, let her know. Don't go out with him and then tell her because the bitch is probably going to feel like you did this behind her back and you were sneaky and she might say shit about you on social media. Either way, I would definitely play my cards correctly and I would definitely approach Michelle but I would also let her know I do know the reason why he blocked you and you know what I'm saying take it from there and if she really gets upset with it and doesn't want to be your friend over it then sweetheart I know 20 years is a long time listen I don't have too many friends my girl Nadira that's my friend we've been friends forever since we was like 12 13 years old okay and here it is we're both 44 45 years old so we've been friends for a very long time and i know her and she know me so we're not going to allow anything like that to come in between us but friends are really hard to find a friend like you cannot have six or five different friends one good friend is all you need that's all you need but if you do have a couple sporadically then that's fine too but you know what i'm saying you don't want to let anything interfere with your friendship but if your friend is getting irate, the bitch is getting shady and shit, then that's time when you need to sometimes step back a little bit. I'm not saying end the friendship because if you've been friends for 20 years, of course you don't want to end the friendship. You probably feel like that's your girl, but how close are you guys? And then even so, it still doesn't matter, but there's no motherfucking girl code in this shit. There's no motherfucking girl code. Bitch, you didn't date him. He wouldn't want to have no part to you. You fucked with his cousin, point blank period, you were blocked okay stop lying to me about the bullshit stop trying to feed yourself the bullshit and just let's be real about it and just say yeah i was stalking the nigga like white on rice and i was trying to get with him even after he blocked me and that's the reason why he blocked me but i give you my blessings tracy to go out and have a good time with him that's it sometimes you got to be the bigger woman and shit i'm telling y'all all the time Stop chasing after these niggas because sometimes they're not even worth it. Or these bitches because sometimes they're not even worth it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And friendship, listen, 
Y'all know I don't have that many friends. So who in the fuck am I to talk about friends? But I do have some friends. The two that I do have, which is Nadira and Robin, they are very close and dear to my heart. So the friends that I do have, I try to hold on to them for dear life. And I wouldn't let anything interfere with them. And that was my mistake with Robin. I let some dumb shit interfere with my friendship with her. And I love her to death. But never again will I allow that. You know what I'm saying? I don't let shit interfere with friendship. You know what I mean? Because friends are hard to find. Real friends are really, really hard to find. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to like a real friend, I'm not trying to like lose them over a guy or over some silly, pathetic foolishness that just could be avoided. You know what I'm saying? If you are if you are able to save your friendship and still date the guy, then I would say go for it. But your friend also needs to know she needs to be truthful with you because lying is not cool. And that's just going to make you bitter towards her on the other end. So I would definitely confront her, but do it in a good way because you don't want to confront her and be aggressive about it. And then she starts feeling like, oh, you only doing this for some dick. Like, okay, I get it. It's just dick. It's just dick. It comes in and goes, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's not yours. You know what I'm saying? So let's not fight over this dude. And when I say let's not fight over this dude, meaning let's not get into an argument with each other over something so simple and minor. That's really not that important. But if you really do like him, Tracy, and you want to try it out, you can never let anyone stop you from doing what you want to do. You're a grown ass woman. And who's to say later on down the line that your relationship with him really blossoms and it was really worth something, you know what I'm saying? Especially if he's got a good head on his shoulder and he's positive, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes that, those qualities are even hard to find. So I really would say, you know what I'm saying? Have a good conversation with your friend because that is your friend, but don't let it destroy or give you a bitter taste towards Sean because of how Michelle feels. You know what I'm saying? You have to give everybody an opportunity. And because she was blocked, she didn't have that opportunity. And that's nobody's fault but her own. But you cannot allow her to stop your opportunity for something that may happen. And it seems like he was really into you and not so much into her. And sometimes that shit hurts. Like if you block me, I'll be, I'll be upset. But then it's like, I'm not going to get blocked. I'm not going to do no stalker shit to get blocked. Like I have never been blocked by anybody. Like I, probably, yeah, I have, but it wasn't for no stalker shit. It was because you run your motherfucking mouth. And if you run your motherfucking mouth, then bitch, I'm gonna come for you too. Fuck out of here with that bullshit. Who the fuck do you think you are? But yeah, I would definitely let Michelle know that I do know the ugly truth. Okay. I do know the ugly truth, and I would also let her know we're friends. Let's not let anything interfere with this. Sometimes when you approach a person, it's always in your deliverance, okay? It be in your deliverance. Whether you say dumb shit out your motherfucking mouth, it's in your deliverance. It's in your tone of how you say shit. So even if you was to say something really nice to her, it's in your tone. It's in your deliverance. So try not to come and be so aggressive, you know what I'm saying, it's stiff and broad shoulders. Try to be a little bit relaxed with the girl because she thinks she seems like she got some things going on, and she and her feelings. Like she probably feels embarrassed because she was acting stalkerish and that's probably going to embarrass her when you say it to her. But you know what I'm saying? We cannot as grown ass women get all uptight over a dude who didn't want to fuck with us in the first place. Bitch, get over it and move on. There's so much more to life. There's so many more dicks out there that you can go ahead and see. So that's my opinion. What would y'all do in this situation? So now we're going to move on to the next one. I'm so happy that I got like all these real talks. You guys really don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here is the new one. This one is kind of like, it kind of like hit home. Like I could relate to this. Hi, my name is, we're going to call her Shawnee. Hi, my name is Shawnee. Me and my boyfriend's mom used to be super close when I lived in Colorado. When I moved back to Milwaukee, it's like I saw the true her. I noticed that every time she was around his other brother's girlfriend, she would act funny and different towards me. So I asked her about it and she flipped the script and made indirect posts about me on social media. And she told the girl, her other son's girlfriend, I was jealous of her, which I am not. So we got past that. Then one day I went to the casino with my boyfriend's mom as well as her sister-in-law. 
And the lady was rude. His, his mom's sister-in-law was rude to me. Basically, my boyfriend's aunt-in-law told me I didn't sound like a woman. And before I told his mom how I felt about the conversation that his aunt had with me, I asked other people for their opinion on the comment that she had made about me not sounding like a woman. And everyone said it was so rude. So I reached out to his mother, my boyfriend's mother, and wanted to have a conversation with her about it. And she was like, oh, she doesn't know what she meant by it. I don't know what my sister-in-law meant by that comment. So I reached out to the aunt, the one who said that about me and asked her, what did she mean by, I don't sound like a woman. And she said she meant nothing by it. So then my boyfriend's mom went on Facebook talking about me indirectly again, saying how I'm messy and I need Jesus. Then they even said I was man manipulative and sneaky and I was confused because all I did was express how the comment that his aunt had made about me and how it made me feel. Now, after all that, ev now after all of this, every time I'm around his mom, my boyfriend's mom, she tells me that I'm weird and stuff, and she acts totally different towards me as if we wasn't ever close. I distance myself from his mom because I'm protecting my own energy, but she just irritates me how she's made me look like a horrible person to his family, and I'm not... Um, I don't know what to do about it. My boyfriend is telling me just to let it go and don't let it irritate you, but it just really starts to irritate me. What would you do? She always is playing the victim role. So Shawnee's boyfriend's mother, used, uh, excuse me, Shawnee's boyfriend's mom used to be really close with her. You know, they would be cool. And then basically some shit happened. She started going around Shawnee's boyfriend's mom, the mother, the boyfriend's mother is going on social media talking about how she messy, how she jealous of her other son's girlfriend, all of this messy shit, being disrespectful out the mouth, you know what I'm saying? Calling her weird and shit like that. Let, let me, let me say this. And then her boyfriend is telling her just to ignore it. Let me say this. Yeah, you can ignore that shit, but for so long, who about to sit there and ignore that shit all the time? That's, that might be his mother, Shawnee. That, that is your boyfriend's mom. Okay. We get that, but that's not your motherfucking mother. Okay. She a grown ass woman, just like you a grown ass woman. You deserve respect. Just like you give her respect. I don't give a fuck. If I am your, your son's girlfriend, you don't disrespect me. I'm a human being. There's no disrespect going to go on here. And as long as you allow that bitch to talk shit to you and talk shit on, on social media about you, I promise you. And I guarantee you, I promise. She gonna continue to do that shit. As long as you allow his mother to disrespect you, call you names, post shit about you on social media, then she's gonna continue doing it. Sometimes, like we say, we try to save face only for certain people. And I get where she's coming from because that's her boyfriend and that's her boyfriend's mom. She's trying to be respectable because that's her boyfriend's mother. However, Shawnee is a human being in her own. She's a grown ass woman too. Your mother don't need to act like that towards me. If that bitch don't like you, then that's fine. You're not there for her to like you. you there for her son. But regardless of how she may feel about you, Shawnee, there is a line, a thin line. And bitch, you need to respect that. Regardless if I'm his girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend, whatever it is, his mother needs to respect the fact that you are a grown ass woman and you deserve respect too. Now, let me say this much. If a bitch go on social media about me and say how I'm messy, I don't give a fuck if it is his mother. You're not about to disrespect me to the whole wide motherfucking web. All right. Messy. What the fuck do you call that? A grown ass old woman on social media being messy to her son's girlfriend. That's like disrespectful to the girlfriend and to the son and to the family. Like who does that? You know what I'm saying? And then your boyfriend is saying to ignore it. Why don't he get some balls and say something to his mother about it? You know what I'm saying? But sometimes that don't even work. They still want to run their motherfucking mouths. And let me tell y'all, mother-in-laws, sister-in-laws, father-in-laws, brother-in-laws, whoever family members, they can get it too. Okay. Trust me. They're not your family. And if they was, they can get it too. You don't let nobody disrespect you because you fucking with a family member. Fuck out of here with that shit. Bitch, I'm not fucking you. I'm fucking your son. You ain't about to sit here and talk to me like that. 
I got a mama too. Nah, either I'm going to go get my mama on your ass or we going to handle this like two grown ass women. Let me say this much. Let me tell y'all something. I have been in my tongue in so many different situations, okay, for in-laws and shit to the point where it's not cool. You know what I'm saying? Because we have feelings and I'm not about to be disrespected and I'm not about to be butt hurt because as your family members, okay, let's get that straight. When you allow somebody to continuously do something to you, they either feel like you're scared, you're a punk, or they just feel like they can continuously do it. And I get that that's your boyfriend and you want to show respect to his mother, but she's not showing no respect to you. I wouldn't care if you was his girlfriend, his baby mother, or his wife. You're supposed to have respect just like she's entitled to respect. I'm pretty sure you don't go up in her house and talk shit and write messy shit about her on social media. Had you done that, Shawnee, I'm pretty sure she would have said all kind of dirty things to her son about you and how you ain't worthy of being with him, et cetera, et cetera. Which she has done already by calling you manipulative, sneaky, et cetera, et cetera. Honey. You good, because that lady would have been got a tongue lashing from me a long motherfucking time ago. There's no way I'm going to let you go on social media and talk shit about me. I don't even let strangers go on social media and talk shit about me. But I damn sure ain't going to let my boyfriend or my spouse mama go on social media and talk shit about me. Bitch, I would drag her motherfucking old ass to the white meat, okay, down the motherfucking social media curb, okay? Down the motherfucking social media lane, I would drag her motherfucking ass and then say to the boyfriend, listen, you never did nothing about it and I got tired of it. I deserve respect too. She's going on social media, tagging me, at me, all kind of things, disrespecting me. And you're not saying anything about it. All you can tell me is just to ignore it. But let's be realistic. I do have feelings just like anyone else. And that shit gets to be irritating sometimes um, to ignore shit. Why was I just talking about Robin and she texted me? That's too crazy. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's disrespectful. Just because that's his mother does not give her the right to disrespect you. You are a person, sweetheart. Listen, the next time you go over there, sip some coffee. Well, you don't sip some coffee. But if you go get yourself one of these, Shawnee, I'm pretty sure you will be happy. Okay? The next time you go over to your boyfriend's house and his mother come out of her face, because that's what the fuck I'm going to say. She coming out of her face. When you run your mouth like that, get you coming out of your face. Next time you go to his mother's house and she say some disrespectful shit to you, don't approach her and say, listen, I need to have a talk with you. Because, you know, of course she's going to go and say, well, she started it. I wasn't even going to say nothing to her. Let's not do it like that. The next time you go over there and she says some fucking disrespectful, foul, grimy, gritty shit to you or in reference to you, that's when you're going to have to address her. You're going to have to address her. You can address her really politely and stern, okay, and give her straight eye contact and don't look away. Give her straight eye contact so that way she know you mean some motherfucking business. I'm not about to let no one disrespect me. And it comes a time when you know what is enough is enough. And just like you said, it's irritating you. Listen. I understand you want to save your energy. I have felt the same motherfucking way too. But sometimes your energy get burnt the fuck out, honey. And just like that little energizer bunny, he need to change them batteries sometimes, sweetheart, because they get used up and your energy is about to get really used up. And then what's going to happen is you going to keep trying to compose yourself and compose your motherfucking energy and your tongue. And then what's going to happen is she going to, she going to say something to you with the wrong day, the wrong motherfucking time. And what's going to happen is you're going to explode on her ass and you'll probably end up calling her all kind of bitches and disrespectful shit that you really could avoid it by just having a simple conversation with this lady. So being that that's your boyfriend's mom, you know what I'm saying? You really can't get too grimy with her, but you can if you want to, you know what I'm saying? It's all about respect. I could care less. Just because you his mother don't mean that you could be disrespectful to me. Sometimes they do that shit to try to push you away from their son, to get you to get out the picture, to leave them alone. You know what I'm saying? You know, when it comes to son, it's like, oh, that's my son, mama's boy type shit. I don't do shit like that because I don't have time for it. You know what I'm saying? And like with my kids, that's my sons. I have two of them. They got girlfriends. One has been with his girlfriend for like 12 years. 
But you know what I'm saying? If he's done anything disrespectful to his girlfriend, you know what I'm saying? My daughter-in-law, then I'm going to say something. But I don't, you know, say I don't be disrespectful to their girlfriends. I don't say anything. I'm like, well, my daughter-in-law who has my grandkids, me and her are close. We're like this. So, you know what I'm saying? We've had our moments where she said some shit or not even. Okay. I might have somewhat threatened her in the beginning, like, of like 10 years ago, you know, and it wasn't really a threat. You know, she had really upset my son and I let her know, like, don't be disrespectful. I didn't say that, but I did say some things kind of up close personal. I didn't, I wasn't screaming. I just, you know, when she gave me a hug, I kind of like whispered it in her ear. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, something like that. But I don't do that anymore. I've done it one time and that was that, you know what I'm saying? I'm all for them having a relationship with my other son, Wuzzle, who's always in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I did say something one time to his girlfriend, like two years ago on a Valentine's day, because I made her this gorgeous Valentine's day basket for my son. He asked me to make it. And, um, we went to her job to surprise her because she told him that she'll be at work until seven o'clock that Valentine's day. Well, why when we get there, the bitch is not there. They were like, she doesn't come back for two more days. So she had off today? Yeah. So then we called her. She called her phone. He's like, oh, I'm at work. I'm at your job. She's like, oh, hold on. I'm in the back. Basically, the bitch was lying to my son, talking about she was in the back and she'll be out. And then she said she couldn't come out. And then we had to confront her. I had to confront her because, bitch, I made this basket for you and then drove to your motherfucking job. And now you're trying to say you at work in the back and all of this shit. But you lied. So I had to snatch the phone and tell him, you're not at, tell her, you're not at work. You lied. Listen, did she take a fucking cab, a Uber to her job just to, sh to, to come up and say sorry to my son and me? Like, you know, like, bitch, don't nobody care about that shit now. You know, and he was trying to talk to her. I'm like, why would you lie about getting off of work on Valentine's Day at seven o'clock? You guys had the whole day. Why would you lie about that? Yeah, it's probably because you wanted to be with somebody the fuck else. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I did confront her. My son was trying to speak with her. I said, let's go, Wuzzle. Let's go. You ain't got time for this fucking bitch. Let's go. Don't give her shit. Give me my motherfucking basket back. So yeah, all right. So I did say something two years ago. That was two years ago. All right, you guys, that was two years ago. I did say something because I made this basket for you and you're going to go be cheating on my son on Valentine's Day, bitch. Lying to me, lying to my son, cheating. You, you damn right I said something. You damn right. My son was so hurt and upset. You damn right I said something. Eventually, they got back together, okay? And then there was another big fight between them, an argument. And okay, I did get in this one. I only got in this one, but I liked the girl. She was really cool. And I still was cool with her after that, you know? I, like, kept my distance. I was respectful. I did her hair for prom, gave her some lashes and everything. But, um, yeah, another incident happened. I just so happened to be coming downstairs at 11 o'clock at night and I hear my son on the phone arguing and he's basically saying, what you always talking about my mother for? Why are you always talking about her? If I go put her on the phone. So I just so happened to be coming to, coming by, you know, walking by, minding my business. And I heard the conversation. So then I was like, what's going on? Who's talking about me? And he said, Michaela. And I was like, what? Snatched the phone. Why? You, what's up, Michaela? I'm here. What do you, what do you want? Why are you talking about me? She's not saying anything. And I'm like, I'm on the phone. Why do you keep talking about me? And not only did my son tell me what she was saying, but my daughter heard her. Was on speaker. You know, so you uh, stay talking shit about me? Like, you know, why you keep talking about me? Keep my name out of your mouth. I have nothing to do with your relationship. So basically, it boiled down to this. My son was like, I'm coming to get all my stuff from you. And you better give me my shit. Um, of course it was by then it was like 1230 at night. I had to drive him over there to get his shit out of her house. And my daughter Tati came through and was with him. I just sat in the car because I'm not about to be involved in no kid shit. Like that shit is kid shit to me because I'm a grown ass woman. So, but I don't get involved. Okay. Like that, like that. I don't, I don't do petty shit. I don't call them weird. I don't say anything like that to my sons about their girlfriends or whoever they're dating because that's not my place. But if you be disrespectful to me, I don't give a fuck if you their girlfriend or not, bitch, you're not about to be disrespectful to me. So the same thing goes for the mother. 
I'm not going to be disrespectful to their girlfriends unless they be disrespectful to me or, or some real disrespectful shit to one of my kids. I'm not going to do that. But this incident, I had no choice but to say something because you done lied to me, bitch, and lied to my son. I drove all the way over here and you're not even at work. You were some other dude. We're not about to do that. This is when I'm going to step the fuck in because I'm a woman. And it's funny how women always complain about there's no good men out there. But then when you have one, despite my son, he might get in trouble sometimes, but he's good to a girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? You still, you thotting around, you being a thotty. So like, I really can't get with that. So obviously, yeah, I was going to say something because you're not about to be cheating on my son. We're not going to do that. So that was like the incidents when I did get involved. But other than that, I really don't, you know what I'm saying? Like I have met a couple of his little girlfriends, you know, that he doesn't cheat on them. He just, you know, after they broke up, this was like a couple years ago, he's had other little girlfriends, you know, he's brought one over one time. I had to tell him, stop fucking with the social media, meeting these girls through those social media. And then when you see them, they look like the Michelin tire guy. Yeah. One of them looked like the Michelin tire guy. You know, she had on the same color outfit as the Michelin tire guy. You know the Michelin tire guy or the dough boy from Ghostbusters, that big dough thing. Not saying anything is wrong with the size, sweetheart, but it's what you betrayed on social media and then what you see in person that have a motherfucker's mouth like, okay. That's how his mouth was. And when she came in my house, I was like. And then me and my daughter was like, uh, we think he got catfished. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't do no shit like that. But I've, I've been still been respectable to them. I might have talked shit about them after they left to him. Like, boy, what you doing with that girl? You're too cute for her. What is wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? I've done things like that, but I've said them to him. Just fucking with him. But it all boils down to this. It's all about respect. And the one thing that I would do, the next time that lady get out of character and call me some type of motherfucking name, whatever, or be disrespectful to me, I'm going to let her know, listen, um, I understand you're his mother, but I would really appreciate the disrespect from you to stop. I don't disrespect you, and I would really like for you to give me the same type of respect and treatment as I give to you. And that's it. If that bitch try to confront you or get out of character, hey, Mrs. Boyfriend's mom, I'm going to go. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. But I'm just asking you, please don't disrespect me any longer. I hope you have a great evening. And I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy your night. That's it. Sometimes you got to pull yourself away from situations like that because if you don't, you will get so out of character that it's just not even worth it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when you get out get too out of character, you got people talking shit about you. You got people just looking at you all ca crazy. You embarrass yourself. And I cannot stand being embarrassed. Regardless if I'm doing it myself or somebody else is doing it to me, I do not like to be embarrassed. So sometimes with situations like that, with people that are really immature, like his mother, because if you can go on social media and be like, oh, she's real messy. She needs Jesus. How the fuck do you put two things together? She's so messy. She needs Jesus. Bitch, you be a messy. You grown ass woman, old grown ass woman, you be a messy. And I don't know how old she is, but she's older than her son. Okay, so I figured that you're an adult. So you gonna go on social media, a grown woman, and say your son's girlfriend is messy, weird, manipulative, sneaky, whatever, and she needs Jesus. Everything you just did was so devilish and so out of character and so disrespectful. And you gonna add Jesus to the sentence? Girl, please, you need to go pray for your motherfucking self. Do a couple Hail Marys all motherfucking day, okay? I'm talking about somebody messy. That's what you call messy and just immature. That's immaturity. If, the, if, if you have a boyfriend and his mother is doing shit like that on Facebook, that's an immature person. And those are the type of people that you have to step to and step real lightly because those are the type of people that will get you real out of character, out of yourself. And then you be on the news somewhere because you done busted their motherfucking head open to the white meat. Oh, so yeah, we don't want to do that. So with her, I would say approach her. 
when she does disrespect you, don't approach her on your own and start some shit. Because even though you're not starting no shit, that bitch gonna say you starting some shit. So the next time she be disrespectful, oh, you you weird. That's disrespectful. Bitch, you're not about to sit here and call me weird. I'm not no motherfucking alien from outer space. You're crazy. Bitch, you're the weird one going on social media with your old motherfucking ass talking about somebody messy and manipulative. What you think you are? You messy as hell, bitch. You need Jesus, God, Holy Mary, Zeus, motherfucking Aphrodite, or whoever. You need every last God there is because you're too old to be acting like this. Okay, that be some shit that I would probably say. But, you know, we're not going to do that shit no more. We're going to be mature about this because those are my old days. And we're going to just wait till that lady say some real direct shit. Fuck the indirect shit. Because when people send indirect shit or say indirect messages or indirect shit about you on in social media or in general in your face... That indirect shit means you a punk bitch and you ain't really going to say this shit truthfully. Because if you bout your shit and you real, then you ain't got to send no indirect shit. Just be for real. Be, be straight up. Have no filter like me. And just say the shit. Don't beat around the bush. Don't. We going to go for the direct shit. So if that bitch come to you with some direct shit, let her know. I would really appreciate it. <laughs> hey, Miss Boyfriend's mother. You know, I really enjoy coming over, but... You know, I really would just um, appreciate if you would stop disrespecting me. However you word it, just be subtle about the shit because you don't need this bitch playing victim and acting all crazy and then telling her son you did something disrespectful and then you and him get in the argument. Let's not do that. But with these type of people who are immature, you really have to approach them and approach the situation on some more or less like some humble shit. You know, it's only for your own benefit. It ain't even for their benefit. It's for your benefit. You know what I'm saying? For yours. So, don't continuously let her disrespect because if you do, she will, okay? As long as you allow it, she will. And if your boyfriend can't respect the fact that you don't want to be disrespected from him, then that's when you have to take it in your own hands. He's obviously not saying anything or doing anything because all he's saying is to ignore it. I'm pretty sure if it were him, he wouldn't like it as well. You can't ignore shit. You cannot ignore disrespect. It's disrespect. You know what I'm saying? I can't stand when somebody's disrespectful to me or fucking um, unappreciative or ungrateful or just like, I, I don't like shit like that because I'm not an unappreciative person and I'm not ungrateful and it's probably the same thing, but I'm not like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I don't go around disrespecting people or saying mean shit to people unless you provoke me to. I will. I'm not saying that I won't because I will. Okay, but I cannot stand people who just go around and just say mean things to people because that's what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? That's how they feel like it's okay. It's not okay to be disrespectful to anyone. It's not okay to be mean to someone. You have to think about it. Would you like that? Would your motherfucking ass like to be disrespected and being mean to? No. So why do it to others? Do unto the others as you would want done to yourself. Bottom line. And if this bitch is talking about Jesus, then obviously she's a church goer. Or she's probably not. She's just probably some mean, hateful ass, miserable old lady who's mad that her son is fucking and she probably ain't getting no dick. Bottom line. Hmm. So let Shorty know what you would do in this situation. But girl, I'm about to go. Gotta go downstairs and cook some dinner and stuff. So I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. Let me know what you think. I love you guys. Don't be talking about my wig, okay? I love you guys, and I'll see y'all in a soon-to-come video.